All right, it's recording. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I really don't even know what the fuck, like, what this video really is. Like, I don't know. I've just been having a lot of thoughts in my mind. Um. I mean, I guess I could say that like, there's some things that um. I really wanted to say to my mama, like. But I, you know, I'm not gonna get a chance to say that shit, obviously, because we not cool with each other at all, like so. But uh, you know, I guess this is just shit that I would tell her if it was cool, whatever. Um, but yeah, what's up, ma? Fucking uh, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, saying this shit. Anyway, um, yeah, I watched uh, that movie you told me about like a while ago, uh, like months ago when you came over my house and shit. Back when you used to come over and chill with me and shit, just talk. Um, oh, it was called Cooley High. Yeah, the black movie. Yeah, that shit was cool as hell. Like, what my mama, bro? Like, what the fuck? Um, damn, that shit crazy. I watched that shit, uh, like, last week. That shit was deep. Um, I forgot his fucking name. But, uh, the dude, like, they, his best, the, uh, the nerd dude, his best friend, whatever, they beat him to death in the street and shit. That shit was crazy. Even though that movie was really, like, I think it was on some 80s shit. Or 70s, one of them, uh. Like, yeah, they, they still had a lot of street shit going on back then. That's crazy. That shit made me just, like, think about shit. Like, um, as black people, like, even in 2022, like, we ain't progressed at all. Like, I, that's crazy. Like, just think about that shit. Um, back then, they was trying to make out the hood just like we are now. And back then, like, the most worked jobs in the fucking hood for black people was factory shit. And that's how it is now. We just don't call it factory. We call it warehouse, but it's the same shit. That shit just had me thinking or whatever. Uh, but once again, like, this video is just, like, shit that I would... I used to talk to my mom about, whatever. She told me a bunch of stuff um, last year and years before um, that I didn't really understand or, like, really look into or whatever for a hell of reasons um, until now. Like, um, I've been just soul searching, I guess you could say, recently. I mean, I was always a deep person anyway. But, like, now I just, like, I don't know how to explain that shit. I'm, I'm just on some fucking way deeper shit, man. Like, no bullshit. Um, but, yeah. You're probably mad at me or whatever. If we still talk or whatever. Because, um, I fucking, uh, I ain't been doing, I ain't been really eating no real food recently. I mean, I really don't fucking need to. I'm healthier than everybody else. <laughs> Bitch, I'm not even vaccinated. And I'm not even catching no fucking COVID and all that pussy ass shit. But anyway, that's not the point. Um, I just be eating a lot of fucking dessert shit. I've been eating a lot of cake and ice cream. Like, I work at Meyer now. And um, the baker women, they be cooking for me and shit up there. Uh, they're a lot older women or whatever. But I told them, like, because um, they be making these cakes, whatever. That's like $5, but they like big as fuck or whatever. But anyway, y'all be buying that shit. I'm not the only nigga that be buying that shit. And so they be cooking for me and shit sometimes when I go up there. Like cookies and all that shit. And um, I told him, I was like, I love everything I cook. Like, that shit is so fucking flame. Like, what? So they be buying me all this shit. Uh, I would show you the refrigerator and shit, but on the video. But this ain't my house, so I try not to do certain things in here. Um, but yeah, that shit crazy. Like, what? I will be eating hella desserts. I will be eating cake for, like, two fucking weeks. <sighs> Fuck, I already stopped, like, yawning. But anyway, um, yeah. Like, chocolate cake with, like, sprinkles and shit. It's called, like, a celebration cake. Motherfuckers thought it was my birthday and shit. Like, nigga, it's my birthday every day, you stupid bitch. Like, but anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. Like, yeah, bro, I ain't been doing shit. I just been, like, I don't know. Just, I got hella shit on my mind, but these are the light things that are in my head. Like, these are the light fucking moments. Um, Cooley High. I started listening to Erica Badu. Everything you put me on to when I was a kid and shit. I actually understand that shit fully now. Uh, I listened to her old to hip hop, uh, which is called Love of My Life. That shit was deep on soul. Like, what? That shit was deep. Um, really, that was some soul shit. Like, what? I love that shit. Um, I listened to one of her, like, a couple of her albums, actually. Um, I listened to this song called On and On. I be fucking with her shit now. I started listening to Mary J. All the shit that, like, you used to bang and shit. Now I understand why you used to fuck with that shit heavy. Like, that shit really cold. I like that shit. Um, but yeah, I really, what, it's, it's really some sentimental music, no bullshit. 
Um, I've I've been doing a lot, man. Like I've seen some uh, other black movies too. I'm trying to fucking remember. Well, all of them are called. I'll be watching that shit on Pluto, Pluto TV, because I ain't got the bands for a service right now. I really can't be spending too much because I, I gotta get two K for this car in March. So, um, but yeah, uh, that shit was cool though. Like I've been doing a lot of that, chilling, playing the game, watching stuff. Nothing seriously has really changed, really, except for you know my belongings. You know, I had to throw a lot of shit away. Um, I mean. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm still somewhat the same, you know. I just been going through a lot mentally, trying to find a way to my dreams. Oh, trying to see if I can get a track coach, man. I've been, I've been, um, uh, oh, sending messages uh, to these sports agencies all over the fucking states, like Florida and shit. In other places, just trying to see if one of uh, agent will represent me, whatever, so I can get a coach and stuff. Been very transparent about my motherfucking situation, with my GD and everything like that. Hoping somebody take a chance on me because I got the talent, you know. I got the motivation also. I just need somebody to, to give me some resources. But uh, and you know, investing time in me, you know. But it's hard because you know I'm black and from the hood. You already know what's up, you know. Um, and I'm not even well educated, so hey. But, yeah, ma, I just, you know, I've been chilling, whatever. I don't even know why I'm making this video to you, really. I just, um, I just, I don't know. I think about you. I thought about you a couple of days ago. You know, I, um, I don't know, bro. I do miss you. I ain't gonna stun. I, I be telling motherfuckers about, you know, my childhood. How, you know, you used to build Legos and shit with us, you know. Well, me specifically, because I'm the oldest, obviously. Uh, be cooking for us and shit, cooking cookies and shit like that. Oh, but keep yawning. I was reminiscing about you and like a lot of shit recently. I need to write all this stuff down, collect my thoughts. I just, I don't know. My thoughts have been fucking scattered recently. There's this girl I'm trying to talk to at work. She's beautiful, like little bit no bullshit. She, uh, she's like one year younger than me. But once again, we. I probably shouldn't get into that too much. She's actually engaged, so yeah. But anyway, um, and somehow I actually met her dude. Uh, his name is Kamal. It's weird, bro. His name means the same as mine in the Bible. Um, he uh, he's also a track runner. Also, he's a sprinter. He's actually faster than me. Uh, he's top fifty in the region right now. Um, it's crazy. We got a lot of shit in common. And some of his family is actually from Indianapolis. He's from Kentucky, though. Um, yeah. But that, I was talking to his fiance Keisha, before I even met him, though. But he works at Meyer also, and she does also. Uh, this is fucking crazy, saying all this shit. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. I don't know. But you know me and females, I mean. I'm not trying to fuck her or nothing like that. I just, whatever, you know me. I'm very poetic and shit. I'll be writing shit, probably say something to her, whatever. She get married in May, but I won't be here anyway in this state, so it doesn't matter. I might say, you you already know me, because I did give a letter to Brenda, so you already know what happened when I was fucking with her and shit. I'll probably, I'm not going to give her a letter. I'll, I'm going to verbalize that shit, say some poetic shit, you know, about how I feel about her. And then, you know, hopefully I don't get into her do, but motherfuckers watching though, look, you already know. Um, but I'm just saying like, you know, that's, you know me, like you said, every time you get into a relationship, I get so worried. Like, yeah, you're right. I, I'm always on some dangerous shit. I wish it wasn't like that, but uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Like, I don't know. It's just me. Cause when I first started working there, my first day there, I put my eyes on her. I was like, who the fuck is that? Like, what? I gotta talk. Um, man, it's, it's crazy. It, I don't know. I got problems. I already... You know, it's not just me, though. She talking to me. So, uh, which I'm not saying that makes it better, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. But it's cool. She ain't gonna choose me over him anyway, bro. Come on now. 
This nigga, they got like six years together. They've been together since high school, you know. They got a whole house together and shit. There's no fucking way. I'm just a broke street nigga trying to become a famous athlete. Literally. <laughs> and I'm homeless right now. So, I don't even got a fucking car, you know, let alone a place to really, like, live. This ain't in my house. And I'm, I'm about to be out of here in two months. So, there's no fucking way that she would choose me over him, all right? Because, you know, me and Cuz was just talking about that shit. My mama, like, literally. He was like, you don't know. Some nigga at work was saying, you don't know, but but I do know, okay? I'm literally just a poor street nigga. That's it, that's it. you know. Born and raised in the hood for 25 years, all I know. You know, she a suburban black girl. Beautiful as hell. Mm, we ain't even gonna get into that, but I'm just saying, like, you know, but I'm just saying, um, yeah, there's no fucking way. Um, but yeah, I think about you often, Ma. Uh, Hella music I've been listening to. Like I said, I, I've been banging Tupac. Uh, I, w I mean, I'm from the hood, nigga. And, you know, they say, I mean, uh, you know what you always used to say and shit. You either a part of the hood um, or you just live in the hood. And I definitely was a part of it. So, you know, I understand what the fuck he be spitting. That shit deep. He, he put that song out, uh, When Thugs Cry. That shit deep. I heard a little her version of Gangsta's Cry. That shit was deep, too. You know, but like, yeah, that pop version was crazy. My mom, she had me tearing up and shit. A lot of shit he said was just like the way he articulated the motherfucking struggle and shit was fucking deep. And it's, it's, it's insanely realistic, like for real. And they say all the motherfucking, you know, black people and shit in the hood ain't educated and shit. We we not this and that because we don't got degrees. Like, come on now, I write all the time. Like what? I I I to, uh, I um sorry, I can't even talk right now. I could articulate shit well when I need to, you know. But other than that, I mean, I'm gonna talk in slang and do what the fuck I want and curse. That's what the fuck it is. But yeah, um, I'm just saying, man, I do miss you and shit. I'm not gonna say sorry for all the shit that, you know, I said, you know, about killing you and shit like that. I'm not gonna say sorry for that because you was born and raised in the streets just like me. You more on the street shit than me. You was gained up and shit. And you fuck with a man that openly threatens to kill me. And talks about how his family's gonna kill me. So, you know, I'm not gonna say sorry for none of that shit. Plus, I'm not the kind of nigga that really says sorry for shit anyway. Unless you really deserve it. I don't forgive motherfuckers like that at all. I ain't never forgave nobody except for Kayla. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, you know. I'm just being honest about this shit. This is not one of those videos where I'm finna say some heartfelt fucking apologetic shit, nigga, you know. I was just saying that, you know, I do miss you. I think about you and shit. And I wish it was different between us. But at the same time, you know, you know, you want to be on some slave shit with this nigga, you'd fucking do that. But I ain't nobody's bitch and I ain't nobody's fucking slave. You have to kill me. The fuck? Because I ain't fucking for shit. You know, you already fucking know, though. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I still got a little motherfucking love for you. But I guess that's how the hood is, you know? Sometimes you love motherfuckers and sometimes you gotta kill the motherfuckers. People, a lot of people watching this shit that's never been raised in those kind of circumstances don't know what the fuck I'm talking about at all. But it happens every fucking day. The same motherfucker you call it a friend or some shit, whether you a fucking female or a guy. The same motherfucker you call a friend be the one to take your motherfucking brother out or your fucking sister or some shit. And you ain't got a choice but to go kill the ass, like literally. Because ain't no fucking justice out here. Cows don't give a fuck about us, we don't give a fuck about each other. And the world definitely don't want to hear what the fuck you're saying because we come from poverty. We come from the bottom of America. They don't give a fuck about your ass at all. You know, but I'm just saying, like, yeah, this is one of those situations. Like, you know, I love the fuck up my mama. No bullshit, nigga. I always stood by her no matter what. Oh, so, at the same time, you want to, like, marry some nigga or whatever and take his side for shit, then I don't give a fuck about what happens to you. Like, fuck all that. You know, it's only a couple motherfuckers I fuck with out here. A lot of my friends dying and shit and going to prison. I can't even talk to my little brother and sister because they live with my mama and that bitch ass nigga. You know, one of my cousins, I love her and shit, but she, she's not out here mentally. She's suburban and she lets her man run her. You know, my other cousin, we cool and shit. We not, we might not be all the way alike and shit, but that's my motherfucking nigga. I do anything for him. That's my blood. The fuck? He got my back. You know, he the whole reason I got a roof over my head at this moment. Oh, mama. But he's struggling too. You know, he ain't rich, you know. But I'm just saying, like, you know, 
love and miss you, man. No bullshit, you know. Wish shit was different, sort of guy. But hey, I guess it's how it is when you block, you know. And when you really from the hood. Like shit. We we just don't give a fuck about each other. It's just it's just like we were just automatically born with a curse or some shit, man. We we can't never just prevail and succeed with all our family members cool with us and friends and shit. We just we always gotta kill each other, that's how it goes. You know, it's sad to say I adapted to it. I ain't no fucking pussy, so I'ma just go with the flow. That's how I go, you know. But um, yeah, I do I do fucking miss you though, for real. I miss talking to you. Yeah, I miss asking for your advice. I miss you coming over with a bunch of spiritual shit to say. Um, I miss you coming over and cooking for me. I actually appreciate it, all that shit. You know. Even if we got into arguments and shit. I always wanted you to get home safely and shit. I always wished I had a car so I could drive you home myself. Even if that bitch has niggas waiting there and shit. Like, literally, I always wished all that shit, bro. I always gave a fuck about you, bro. My mama cared about you more than these niggas that you take dick from. But, you know, it's cool. You know, I don't need you to fucking see that. I don't need you to come say sorry to me. I ain't no fucking pussy. You never, you didn't raise no bitch, you know. I'ma be okay. Even on homeless and shit, even if I got to sleep in a fucking parking lot and shit in my car, nigga, I'm going to be cool. No more fucking tears about that shit. None of that shit. You know. Even if I end up in prison or some shit, I don't expect you to come visit me. Stay with your motherfucking nigga. You take vows for this nigga, you fucking die for this nigga. You know, that's how I see everything. I guess I can't drop that street shit, but hey. I'm going to be on some gangsta shit till I pass out. What's up? But yeah, I do love you though, for real, for real. I miss you. Like man, like man, for for a long time, it's crazy to admit that shit. But for a long time, you was my best friend. You um, like you always was the one warning me about females, telling me about my friends and shit. The ones that was gonna turn on me and try to kill me and shit. You know, warning me not to stay in the streets and shit. Because you know how it's going in. Had my back when niggas really was putting them motherfucking heat on me and shit. Trying to blow me out. Like, man. And I appreciated all that shit. For real. I always looked up to you, nigga. Not just because you a fucking G, but like... Just because you real and you a female. A lot of females are fucking weak out here. They always opening their legs for motherfucking niggas and shit. And sometimes bitches, they just... All they know how to do is lay on their motherfucking back. But you never was like that. So, like, you always push it. Like, you always put in the motherfucker work. You'll fucking put a gun to a bitch in a nigga face and blow their ass away and take their motherfucking case before you fucking get on the strip club and bust it open. You know, you was always real like that. I swear to God. I always respected that shit. This is shit I probably should have said on that video I did to you, but that video was consumed with nothing but hatred and anger, so I couldn't articulate what the fuck I wanted to say to you and shit and verbalize that shit clearly. I was just filled with hella emotion and stuff. But, you know, I, I still love your ass and shit, nigga. No bullshit. Still love Nana, too. Hey, man. I'm just saying all this shit on, on video just because, like, I can't even talk to you in person, you know? And on top of that, nigga, like, um, like I said... <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be here, you know? Niggas could take me out or some shit. I don't know. It's a lot of people that want me dead, bro. You already know that, though. And it feel like Satan just uh, specifically be fucking with me every day. Just because I'm trying to chase my motherfucking dreams. I'm trying to get out unlike everybody else. I don't even got a lot of friends left to really fuck with. You know? And that's why I'm saying that shit to you. Because, you know, you're the only one that's always been there. So, when we really, when we, like, actually fell out and shit, that shit hurt, that pain, nigga, that pain, I'll never forget how bad that fucking hurt, it was at that moment, nigga, like, that I realized that this world, like, is, is fucking cold, nigga, and my mama, like, you know, well, I called your phone and shit, and the motherfucker went to the voicemail and shit, and I realized you blocked me and shit, nigga. That was that moment I realized. And I, I was still in that when that shit happened. I was still living on my own and shit. I was finna get evicted that same week. 
that's when I realized that this world is cold than a bitch when you ain't got motherfuckers that care about you and shit. It's cold as hell. Yeah. That shit hurt like a bitch, bro. I swear. I still remember that motherfucker pain in my chest, nigga. I was walking around all that motherfucking day and shit and like minus 10 weather and shit. But my heart, like, feeling like a hole was in that bitch, you know? Felt like I was finna die, nigga, in the motherfucking streets. For real. That's how I feel when you not by my side, nigga. When you ain't got your hand on my shoulder and shit. And tell me it's gonna be okay. You know, when I can't fucking come to you with advice and shit about life. Females, these bitch-ass niggas. You know, when I fucking, you know... When you come over, I mean, when you don't come over and shit, and I can't put my head in your lap and shit, and just tell you I love you and shit like that. That's how I feel, mom. Like, for real. You my motherfucking mama. Like, can't nobody replace you, nigga. And it's not just because you my mama. It's because, like, of what kind of mom you are. Any weak-ass female can't replace you, nigga. Not even fucking close. And that's how I feel for real. So the shit we got between us, nigga, you know... Whether that shit dies out or not, nigga. Whether one of us dies out or not. Like, I'm always, like, had a pain about this shit, nigga. I'm always had that pain to my mommy, bro. No matter if I'm laying with some woman. No matter if I'm in the street with some new niggas I just met, you know. No matter if I'm alone. You know, in this motherfucking world posted up. Sleeping on the streets or some shit because I'm still homeless. I'm always remember that motherfucking pain, nigga. From you not being in my motherfucking life. I mean, for real. That pain hurt more than not having a motherfucking dad. You know. <sighs> but, um, let me quit playing, though, nigga. I'm running this nigga lights up, so. But, yeah. All right, ma.